I can't tell, but there's definitely a lot of uh, snow coming down. Pretty cool though. I am a wedding and elopement photographer based in Tacoma, Washington. In this video, we're going to talk about the thing that is most under talked about, underappreciated, undervalued in just the creative industry in general, in my opinion, and that is backing up archiving and just making sure that your work digitally is safe. So if you are any type of digital creative, if you make music, if you make graphic design, if you make photos, do you do video, any of that kind of stuff, keep watching this video because we're going to talk about all the ways that I take and all the steps that I take to make sure that all of my work is always safe. So I'm not saying that my way is specifically the perfect solution or anything like that. And if you have any better ideas, anything that you do that you might see a little spot where I'm missing something, please leave a comment in the comments below. Um, so we can all kind of like learn and grow together. But honestly, I see at least like two to three photographers post every day that they've lost a significant portion of a wedding, uh, a full family shoot, something like that. And it almost always comes down to mismanagement of data and just things that no one ever told me, no one ever talked about how to actually put a workflow together and anything like that. And so I figured I would share what I've been doing to make sure that all my stuff is safe and ways that I can do that more automated and ways that have just worked really, really well for me. So back in 2007, when I was asked to photograph my first wedding, I asked one person that I knew who was a wedding photographer what their biggest piece of advice would be, and they told me to make sure that you back up everything. And that didn't just mean what we typically think of as multiple hard drives, backing up your photos in multiple places, but they said, make sure that you have two cameras, two sets of lenses, anything that might break you have to be ready and prepared for that one piece of equipment to break and you still have something that you can fall back on. So before we even start talking about data, if you are doing any sort of paid work, I would highly, highly, highly suggest you never go into it with only one camera or only one lens, at least have it in a bag nearby, something like that so that if you drop your camera, if it malfunctions, if something happens, you have to, as a professional, be able to continue your shoot. And I've had plenty of times, you know, as a wedding photographer, when people are walking down the aisle, when big moments are happening, one of the biggest things that I do is make sure that I always have two cameras on me at all times. So I always shoot with two cameras with a hold fast money maker strap with a wide ish lens on this side and a more telephoto ish, normal ish lens on this side. And I double my coverage throughout the day so that I make sure that even if one of the cameras goes down, if there's something major wrong with it, if it's all corrupt, whatever, I will still have multiple copies. And this goes even into like big moments. Uh, I made a video specifically about shooting two cameras at the same time for specific moments. You can check out in the description below. And I know the other thing that people are gonna say is make sure you are always shooting with two cards. If you have the option to shoot with dual card slots with a camera that can shoot to a SD card and a CF card or two SD cards or whatever it might be. If you have that option, please use it and please duplicate your stuff both ways. So basically we're trying to think of all the different ways we could possibly lose data and ways that your images could fall through the cracks. So a huge thing about your backup workflow is going to be how you handle your memory cards. So I typically shoot with 64 gig SD cards, which for me and my file sizes usually will get me through most of a wedding, if not a full wedding. And then my system here is if I do have to swap them out, I have these Pelican cases that are great. They have weather sealing in here. Um, they're supposed to be waterproof. I'm not gonna go chuck it into the lake or anything like that, but just in case, these things are solid. They're not gonna bend, they're not gonna break, anything like that. Um, so I have multiple of these. And then inside, I have all the cards and I have a system. So the front facing cards are always fresh. That means if they're facing forward, I can use them. If they are turned backwards like this, that means I am definitely not going to use them because they're cards that either haven't been delivered to a client yet or I shot that day. So the first piece of advice with going with this whole thing is to once you take a card out and put it in here, do not put that in your bag and go leave it somewhere. Bags can get stolen, stuff like that. People could accidentally take it. It could fall out, lots of stuff. They do have this little 
hook thing right here. Um, but I just toss this in my back pocket and I keep it on my physical person at all times. Okay, so once I've left a shoot, once I've left a wedding, whatever it might be, the first thing I do is I back up my all my images into two separate drives. And these don't have to be fast drives, they don't have to be anything special. Um, these are cheap-ish Western Digital drives. They're the exact same drive. I use a program called Carbon Copy Cloner to essentially just move the stuff and duplicate them. So they're identical drives. So by the end of a wedding night, by the time I'm back to a hotel or my house or whatever, at minimum, I have a set here, a set here, and a set here. So I have three copies. And I think one of the smartest things that anybody ever told me in terms of data management is that if your photos aren't in three different places, you have to pretend that they don't exist. So I don't actually rest until I know that my stuff is in three separate physical locations. So also if I'm out of town, if I'm traveling for a wedding, at a destination wedding, something like that, the other thing that I do is again, I have this, this goes on me, this goes to the bathroom with me, this goes to the seat with me on a plane, this goes with me wherever I go because this is the master copy of the photos and I'm not letting this out of my sight. And it is basically the most precious thing in the world to me at that time. All right, so these drives, one goes in my own bag, which I just carry on to a, an airplane or whatever, and it's always on me like that. And then my other one goes into my Think Tank International bag, which I keep all my cameras and stuff like that. At all times, I have my stuff in three physical locations, even though the stuff's still on me, it's still in one place. But in case any one of those bags gets stolen, um, I'm still fine. Even if both of these get stolen, I still have these. And so as long as I don't get stolen, I have all my photos. So when I get home, I have this backyard office that we're in right now. I have my home and I have my car. My SD cards stay in the glove compartment in my car, which I can lock. One of these drives stays in my house and another one comes out to my office. If you have anywhere, if you have a locked mailbox, if you have anything else, if you have a neighbor you trust or whatever, I would highly suggest moving one drive somewhere just off site so that if your house burns down, if you get broken into, if something like that, all your eggs aren't just placed in one basket where you know, you could have a major, major issue. Once all this stuff is backed up in multiple places, I transfer that data onto a archive drive called a Synology, which is a network attached storage device. One of my biggest priorities for this off season was to move all the stuff that I had on just years and years of external drives and these giant annoying things. Um, I literally have these cabinets behind me and one of them is just full of 12 plus years full of photos. I have almost every raw photo I've ever taken. Um, and I wanted to be able to consolidate that into a space that would be accessible to me, not only when I'm at my office, but at my house, um, or I'm often traveling for weddings. And so I wanted to have it where I could access any of my, my photos at all times. So after a ton of research and a lot of recommendations from friends, I landed on a solution called Network Attached Storage. And the thing that was recommended to me most by friends of mine who use one are devices by a company called Synology that I actually found are local to me here in Seattle. So I pieced out all my specs, figured out exactly how much storage I needed, started putting something together, and then I remembered I actually had had a conversation with somebody who had worked with Synology before, so I reached out to them about making this video about such a problem that a lot of photographers have with their backup storage and just asked if they wanted to help me out and partner with this video. A lot of you might be familiar with RAID systems like a Drobo, something like that. I've also had other drives that have internal RAID within themselves. And one of the things I wanna caution you about is I hear a lot of people say, oh, it's okay, I transferred them to my RAID, it's backed up, no big deal. RAID stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disks, meaning that for something like mine, I have four disks and the data is striped across multiple disks and the redundancy there is that with the four, I can have any one disk fail and still have the data on the other ones. So while it's redundant, meaning that one of them can fail and the other ones survive, you're good, 
Just having a simple RAID array doesn't mean that it's actually backed up because that still means that all of your stuff is in one physical location that could be stolen, it could be flooded, your whatever it is could burn down, there could be massive corruption, all sorts of stuff might happen. Um, so please, if you have a RAID, make sure it's not the only place you're storing your data. Now I have my Synology set up to be using their own RAID system. It's called Synology Hybrid RAID. Um, which essentially is really, really similar to RAID 5. My friend Kyle Ford is kind of a data expert in all this stuff, and he's also a photographer. He's making a couple of videos, and I'm assuming he'll make some more too. I will link them in the description below because they're super helpful to kind of get started with RAID. And I feel like they would be really helpful to you as well if you're a creative looking to get into RAID storage. Now the cool thing about the Synology RAID that I got is that it's also network attached storage, meaning that it doesn't plug directly into my computer, but that also means that I can access it remotely. So whether I'm in my house, in my office, or even on location somewhere remotely, I have access to every single one of my photos. All of my stuff is on this because it's attached to my home network, which allows me to access it anywhere in the world. The Synology I have is a DS918 Plus which is my RAID and network attached storage. My unit has the ability to use four drives and I have four 10 terabyte drives from Seagate. They're Seagate Ironwolf drives that are specifically made for network attached storage units. Um, you wanna make sure that you're getting drives that work really well, are really, really reliable and are made specifically for this purpose because they're gonna be on 24 seven, they're gonna be you know, pumping out and reading information a lot. And so if you're using drives that might not necessarily be meant for that type of thing, you might kind of run into some issues. On my computer here, I'll just show you really quick how my archive system works. This is kind of how I have my stuff structured. My Synology device is attached via the network, but it mounts on my computer just kind of like a regular disc would. I have photo, I have my time machine backups in this folder, and then I have video. And then I have my photo stuff kind of put into different categories here. You can see weddings is its own category, obviously, then things go by year. Um, and then I just have everything kind of brought in, I have my raw files here, and then it's sub folders back down to you know JPEGs and edited photos, but um, you can see it's just a really great setup that's accessible to me, just exactly like this one, I'm on my network, but also is accessible to me through their online system um, anywhere I am in the world. The way I'm using the Synology device is it's my main archive, it's my main place where I'm keeping all of my work, but it doesn't mean it's the only place I'm keeping everything. I have all these drives, one of my cabinets behind me is filled with all of these, all these externals, all this stuff that you probably all have as well. So it doesn't mean that I'm deleting all this stuff off of here, but it means that I have transferred all of this stuff on there, and then this is now my backup. In addition to that, I have my main editing computer that is time machine syncing to the Synology, so I have another copy of my entire desktop there. And another thing that I don't think people often think of too is things like their Lightroom catalog. I'm often traveling and have both an iMac here in my office and a MacBook Pro that I work with on the road and in other situations where I need something smaller. One of the things that I do is I keep my Lightroom catalogs in Dropbox, mainly because it syncs to the cloud. Um, a Lightroom catalog also keeps a digital negative, a raw photo version of every single one of my photos in a lower resolution in its catalog so that even if all of my other things went down, everything that I had, I would still have a Lightroom catalog full of about six megapixel photos from a shoot or a wedding or whatever it might be. The other bonus about that is it also syncs between my computers. And so if I'm editing something on my desktop here and I get done doing that and I go to the airport to photograph a wedding somewhere else, I can pop open that same catalog and start editing on my MacBook Pro. So once I'm done editing all my photos, I upload them straight to my client gallery service, which I use called CloudSpot. It's great, it's clean, it works really well for me, and that is another spot where my images sort of live and they're backed up online. So even after all that, there's one more thing I wanna talk about, and it's something that I would consider like emergency cloud storage. It's not something like Dropbox that you're gonna be pulling things on and off all the time, but it's something that is just like worst case disaster scenario, here's what I'm using in case my house burns down, my office burns down, my car 
blows up. And basically in case Tacoma gets nuked and I'm not here, here's what I would be doing to keep all my stuff. I use a service called Backblaze, which in the background automatically just sends anything that's connected to my computer or my laptop. They both upload simultaneously at all times are just pumping data back into um, this backup process through Backblaze. The best thing about it is it's five bucks a month per device, um, which really is nothing, 60 bucks a year, and it's unlimited. So as many devices as you plug in, it will back all of that stuff up to the cloud. But the thing about that is you're transferring terabytes and terabytes of information. So if you don't have very fast internet, you might want to you know, go to a friend's house or something like that, or a business that does have fast internet, so you can kind of start that process going a little bit quicker. So at all times, I have an entire copy of my computer, both on my network attached storage device, the Synology, and I have it backing up to Backblaze. So I know you're probably thinking, Benj, this is ridiculous. I don't need to do all this extra stuff. Um, I can put things on two drives, move them in two locations. You're totally fine, whatever, no big deal. Because that's what I thought for a long time. I had these two drives right here that I had my photos from about 2013, 2014, and 2015 on as my archive drives. They were just sitting back in this thing. And when I went to actually archive them, move them onto my Synology, this little fun thing happened. So cool, my drive's corrupt. It's okay, I have another one, I'll plug the other one in, no big deal. And I got the same notification. Just know that some of your drives after a long, long time might not be working as well as you thought they were. It's nice to have everything in an updated system, not just sitting on countless external drives. I mean, these are just a few, and I know photographers that just have stacks and stacks and stacks of these just you know, lying around everywhere. And as a photographer, my photos are my currency. They are my work, they are what actually matters. Um, about what I do, and so I wanna make sure that I'm doing everything that I can to preserve all that and make sure that going forward, I'm always gonna have it. So as I was in the middle of making this video last week too, I wanna remind you, don't only back up your photos, make sure you're using Time Machine or something else like that, because my main editing computer's hard drive got corrupted and I lost everything off of there. Luckily, I had it backing up and using a Time Machine backup to my Synology drive, and I had my entire computer backed up to Backblaze, and so I lost nothing but a little bit of time. Thanks so much for watching this video, everyone. If you enjoyed it, if you learned something, please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, it's really, really helpful for me to know just by looking at those types of things if this stuff is worthwhile or not, um, and if we wanna keep you know, posting future videos like this. So if you have any questions or comments about anything in this video, please leave a comment in the bottom comment section part. Um, and everything that I use, all the hard drives, all that kind of stuff is gonna be linked in the description below as well. And then if you have any other suggestions, anything that you do better or anything that I might be missing, please leave a comment as well because honestly, I wanna learn and I'm hoping that through sharing this kind of stuff, I can teach and we can all learn together. So thanks so much and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.